Today we are checking in on an experiment I started eight days ago, which is when I left for vacation, went up to the mountains, had a really good time, but I was really worried about the garden because we are in mid-summer. Things are going very, very quickly. So I recorded a bunch of different things that I did before I left, and now we're going to follow back up and see how those things worked, whether I was able to vacation-proof my garden, what made it and what didn't make it. So let's go back in the past, I'll show you what I did, and then I'll show you the updates of how everything looks. The first and most obvious thing that I'll be doing is harvesting any produce that's even close to being ripe. So take a look at this tomato. There is obviously some green still on it, but this is totally fine. It'll ripen to its full flavor. And any of these tomatoes down here, likewise, I will also be taking. I'm going to the mountains, so having some fresh produce that will ripen throughout my trip is actually going to be really nice. I don't have to bring ripe tomatoes. They're gonna get all banged up by the time I get there. Instead, I get to harvest them at this stage, let them ripen along the way, and by the end of the week, I'll be able to enjoy all these tomatoes. So anything like this, any tomatoes, any cucumbers, any squash, beans, peppers, all of that should be harvested before you leave so that it doesn't just sit there and get overripe. I will be having somebody coming to water some plants, I think twice while I'm gone. So I have some strategies on how to keep those guys alive. But the first thing we need to talk about is harvesting any produce that's close to ready. The next thing I'm doing to get ready for my garden while I'm gone is actually a little bit weird. I'm gonna go through and remove any like immature, freshly formed flowers on my cucumbers, on my summer squash, anything that I think will ripen over this next one week period. I don't wanna risk the chance that whoever's watching my garden won't be able to harvest things. I also don't wanna give them extra work, like, hey, make sure my cucumbers get harvested all the time so they keep producing when I get back. So instead what I'm doing is removing every single one of these flowers. I also will be probably just removing the male flowers just to free up energy. One of the nice things about this is that in exchange, what's going to happen is this plant will put out a lot of vertical growth. It'll bush up really nicely. It'll be very healthy on my return. And also by the time I come back, either I'm sure I'll be missing a flower or two or a new one will form tomorrow, get pollinated and be ready on my return. So that is what I'm doing. Anything like again, summer squashes, cucumbers, those are the main ones I could think of that ripen really quickly and form all the time. But this should buy me that one week period I need so that this whole plant isn't producing seed cucumbers and dead by the time I come back. And here's another example of my climbing Summer squash, this is the center cut. I will be removing these flowers. And I don't know if I really mentioned it, but the reason why this is important is that if I let this fruit form, let's say it forms tomorrow, and I wait that entire week before I get back to harvest it, by then it'll be giant, it'll be yellow producing seeds. And as soon as a plant like this produces seeds, it's not really focused on making more fruit. So by doing this, I'm ensuring that this plant isn't just going to give up the ghost and die because it put all of its energy into seed production. Instead, it'll just form a new flush of growth and a new flush of flowers, and hopefully they won't be overwhelmed by the time I'm back. So here are all the tomatoes, the bigger tomatoes that I'm gathering up. There's tons of cherry tomatoes. There's no way I'll be able to pick them all. I also found a nice big Aenea eggplant and a regular cucumber. I wanted to quickly mention that I think I removed something like 30 baby cucumber flowers and they actually looked like they were good. Some of them were already pollinated even. So hopefully this works. Otherwise I just probably removed my biggest bumper crop of cucumbers that I've ever had. So definitely looking forward to seeing what it looks like in a week when I get back. Now let's move over to the seedlings because I have an interesting strategy that I've already tested out and it does definitely work. I just don't know for how long. So let me show you that next. The first thing I'm gonna call your attention to is this little contraption that I built here. This is just simply shade cloth hung up on four corner posts that is draped over all of my seedling trays. So let me show you what this looks like underneath. What I've done is I've added two screws on the ends here so I could just throw that fabric over whenever I need to water. And this is what we're looking at. I have four trays in here. These are all the trays that I started in that recent video for the seeds that I'm starting before fall. And uh, it's looking really good, actually. I have a perfect germination on my lettuce already, so that's really exciting. Actually, on two of my lettuce ones, I already have germination. And some of the brassicas are starting to come up, which is fantastic as well. And this is basically how I've been keeping them alive in the middle of summer. By adding this shade cloth, which is 40% shade cloth, which means that it blocks 40% of all light coming in through it, this is keeping the whole area a lot cooler. It's also stopping the sun from evaporating as much water. It's trapping a little bit of humidity because it is kind of a contained area to some extent. But 
the still will only keep my seedlings watered for like one day at a time, which is actually pretty good for summer. Sometimes I feel like I have to come out twice to water in the summertime. So I'm already getting a day, but here's the next unlock. This is the thing that I've discovered recently and it's worked out really well for me. Like I mentioned, I did one trial run already. So now I feel confident that the system will actually work. So basically what we're doing here is building a wicking surface to hold water as a reservoir and then naturally wick it up into our soil that's within the trays. The nice thing about these trays, of course, is that they have that open bottom, which makes it very easy for water to wick up into it. Now, what we're going to do is pretty low tech and something that all of you guys have access to. And it is simply using some potting mix. So what I'm going to do here is layer a nice thick amount of potting mix entirely covering the bottom of the tray here. So here's where we have a nice thick layer of potting mix that's filling up to the majority of the tray. And now what we're going to do is add water. Get a little bit messy, but we really wanna make sure that soil isn't dry because potting mix can be hydrophobic. So make sure that it's actually truly wet here. And so now what we have is a wet soil bank that is also a naturally wicking material. So now the next thing to do is to take all of our trays and we're just going to literally place it on top of this soup. I'm actually going to be trying to like wiggle them in a little bit to make sure that those bottom holes are actually connecting with the soil here. The benefit of this over just adding a bunch of water is that it shouldn't sit as wet as literally being placed in a pool of water. By being placed in a essentially pool of wet soil, at some point that water level will begin to drop and it'll become more like a wicking surface instead of just a pool of water. Having that soil contact is really gonna make a big difference. The other really cool thing about this that I noticed last time I tried it is that eventually the roots from these plants will reach the bottom and they'll be able to access that deeper soil reservoir beneath, which also gives me some freedom from not having to worry about these getting overgrown in their trays because now they have access to deeper soil. So we'll see how this works over a one week period. My hope is that the person who's coming to help me water these plants is only going to have to come like every other day, maybe three days if possible. And this should offer me enough buffer, especially combined with the shade cloth. So now I need to do this to all these trays and we'll see again in a week when I get back whether or not this works. The next thing I'm doing is something that I've been avoiding for a long time, which is actually irrigating every single one of my containers, both in the greenhouse and outside the greenhouse. I also just noticed I forgot to pick the cucumbers in there, so I need to do that next. But what we're doing here is very basic. I'm just using one of these 360 sprayers, attaching it to some supply line. This is quarter inch drip tubing that doesn't have any emitters poked in it. And then all I'm doing here is placing that actual sprinkler head inside my pot like so. And then I trace it back roughly to see how long of a line I need. And then I try to give myself a little bit of extra breathing room so that I can move that pot around without reaching the limits of that line. So a simple cut like so. And I'm gonna grab my barbed quarter inch connector here, attach it to the quarter inch tube that's going to the sprinkler head. And then I'm gonna just use this thing, which is a hole puncher, to go down to the half inch. This is 0 0.70 outer diameter line is the other way that it's often called, if you wanna get technical. And I'm gonna punch in a hole here. Oh wow, this thing works really well compared to that like little push thing that I used before. And then I'm going to attach. So just like that, I've added irrigation to this pot here for this fig. And now I just need to do it another 30 times to every single container over here. This will make it much easier for the person who's caring for my plants. That way they don't have to worry about watering the greenhouse because this is a daily project in the summer. It needs water every single day. And that is just too much for me to ask. So instead, I am just gonna get sweaty inside the greenhouse and get everything hooked up. The last thing I'm doing before I leave is actually starting some seeds, in particular bean seeds. They say that they'll emerge in six to 12 days. I will be gone for eight days to include the day that I leave. So by the time we're back, these should hopefully be up. Now I am choosing this variety very specifically here. The first one is Jade. The reason why I chose Jade is because it is a bean that claims to be tolerant of cold weather and also heat. So I think that means that they should do really well at this shoulder season where August, September can be quite hot or actually quite cool. So that is my plan for this bed. I also have the uh, Maxi Bell, which is another one. I don't think this one claims to have any strengths of like good for cold, good for hot, but I'm also going to be adding them in because I want some filet beans here. 
So that's going to be the final thing. We'll check back in a week. We'll see if these beans came up, if the seedlings are fine, if everything is alive, and whether my cucumber and squash trick actually worked. So see you guys in about a week. So here we are eight days later, and we're going to take a look at how everything fared. Now I did do a quick pass last night. I drove in sometime around 7 p.m., did a quick walkthrough, and I have to say I'm extremely pleased with what I see. So first let's go over some of the harvest stuff that I showed some of the cucumbers and squash, and then we'll go check on the seedlings because that is the one that I'm most excited about. I ended up doing a lot of work inside this greenhouse before I left, so let me show you what I added, how I did it, and what it looks like now. All right, so here is the greenhouse, and the first thing I want to call out that's happened while I was gone is that powdery mildew really set in to the greenhouse, and that is with a fan that was running the entire time I was gone. I went ahead and plugged it in, just had it cruising the entire time, and we still got powdery mildew. So it's not just about wind and the movement of wind, it could also be humidity and all sorts of other factors that affect it. The only thing that was affected, luckily, is the tomato plant here, this tomato plant, and this cucumber in particular. The rest, including that cucumber over there, doesn't have powdery mildew, but it has a whole lot of leaf miner. My God, that is the worst leaf miner damage I've ever had on a plant. I did not realize that they liked greenhouses this much, so I haven't decided quite yet if I wanna treat it or not, but the powdery mildew I'll definitely be treating using that potassium bicarbonate I've showed you guys before. The other thing I'll note is that this cucumber has grown massively. I think when we left, it was maybe down here, I guess right there since I have a clip on it. So all of this is new growth that's happened, and like I predicted, I have a bunch of new cucumber production that is now happening after I left. I was hoping to actually even have a cucumber to harvest when I got back, but I'm also okay with them being well on their way. That is also true for this plant up here. I have a whole lot of flowers forming, regardless of all of that leaf miner damage. But if I did treat the leaf miner damage, this plant would do better overall, so I might have to do that. The other thing I did when I left was I added a bunch of plants to the greenhouse, specifically a Cherry Falls tomato right here. That is one of those tiny tomatoes that sets tons of little fruits. Over here, I've added a lot of peppers. So that's new, that's new, this tomato is new. All of these peppers are new and every single one of these pots in the greenhouse has a little mini sprinkler, one of those 360 sprinklers. And all I did is I turned it on for three to five minutes every day and that is it. I had it automated and it was wonderful. In terms of the green stock, I actually went ahead and just threw one of those sprinklers in there fully open so it's dumping as much water as possible. And here's what we got. We actually got a whole lot of fruit. So I guess regular watering like this is probably good for my strawberry plants, something I did not do before this. Now on this side, I don't know what happened to this tomato, but it was not pleased while it was gone. Luckily, everything else that I added irrigation to, which includes all of these figs here, the fruit trees, every single one of these looks really, really happy to be on irrigation. And in fact, my persimmon, has a lot of fruit that's even ripening now. There was no ripe color on this when I left. So I don't know if it was just the regular watering that did it, but man, this one single plant in a container, I think it has something like 15 to 20 fruit. So I'm very pleased about that. Now for the part that I'm most excited about and the part that I think actually worked extremely, extremely well. This is going to be how I'm just going to grow seedlings from now on, especially in the summertime when it's really hot and the sun is really intense. This whole system worked out extremely well. So let's take a closer look, see what it looks like, see if the soil mat that I created at the bottom of the tray worked out. And just to note, I have not watered these yesterday when I got here, today, this morning. So they've been unwatered for a, I guess, two full days now, and they look fine. So let's take a closer look. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this shade cloth off. That'll be step one. And all I asked uh, the person who was helping me water these plants was to check the bottom, if it looked like the soil was dry, the soil that I laid down, to add more water at that point, and this is what we're left with. And also, one of the things I noticed, because I definitely already took a look at this, I'm not going to lie to you guys, uh, is that uh, especially for the 16 cells, which have a much smaller amount of soil, this worked out phenomenally. I'm sure you guys could see from here, but basically everything here is up, it's looking really healthy, the shade cloth hasn't made it too leggy, it's only, I can't remember if I said it was 30 or 40 percent shade, but it only eliminates 30 or 40% of the sun, which isn't that bad. It's not bad enough to cause legginess. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lift out one of these. Oh yeah, so there we go. You can see on the bottom here, this is a turnip, and there's a bunch of little white roots coming out the bottom. So what happened was that 
let me actually tap this and see if I could pull one of these guys out for you, is that while it was sitting there, it ran out of water in the actual 16 cell itself. So then it shot out roots into the bottom and that went into that soil that we laid down and that's how it got watered. So if it didn't have that soil, this would definitely have not made it. This is actually quite light and dry. The only thing that kept it alive was this nice little mat of soil at the bottom here. So let me give you a closer look. We'll peel some of these up and I'll show you exactly how everything looks. Overall, I have very good germination across the board here. Some of them are a little spottier, but even down here, these are those tiny little lobelia seeds. These are the linaria seeds. Everything has germinated and those are the tiny seeds that are honestly the most difficult to germinate when not watered well. So I'm very happy to see that. The 16 cells have basically perfect germination. For the beets, I have every single beet here except for one cell in the back there. Back here, the arugula looks absolutely wonderful as does the lettuce, the other beet here. And I believe this was the spinach. Most of that is looking okay. Oh no, that's also a lettuce. Spinach is down here. So spinach had the worst germination across the board. I don't know if it was because it was too hot. The other one that I noticed that didn't germinate yet is the chives. That can take one to two weeks. Honestly, I would expect to see some germinated by now, but I will hold out hope to see if they do, in fact, germinate over the next couple days. The brassicas absolutely love this. Every single one has germinated. In fact, every single seed seems to have germinated as well. So I have a lot of culling to do over here. So that's how it works. Let me go ahead and pull one of these up. Let's do one of these brassicas since they're the most grown. And what you'll notice there is that there are roots coming out the bottom. That's exactly what I expected. That's obviously normal just in general, but even without the roots coming out the bottom, I believe that just the soil to soil contact down here was all that we needed to have the water transfer its way up into these cells. Because for example, this has no roots coming out the bottom. There's no way it has roots. These seeds are so small, it would probably take another week for roots to reach the bottom. I don't even really see any coming out the sides. What you're looking at that might look like roots is coconut core thread. So I know this works, the soil is wicking, and this is a foolproof, I think, system for when you need to leave your garden. I think it could go for about three days without additional water, considering the soil reservoir beneath. But after that, you're really pushing it and you're gonna need somebody to come top the water off. But overall, I'm very pleased with this, and this is definitely going to be how I start seeds in the summer moving forward. Before I left, I harvested all of the major tomatoes and peppers out of these two beds. And right now I am rewarded with a lot of new fruit that is ready to pick and ready to enjoy tonight for dinner. So I'm very happy about that. Cherry tomatoes have exploded in growth. My pepper production is just absolutely stupendous right now. <laughs> it's like wild how many hot peppers in particular I have. Over here on this cucumber trellis where we also removed a lot, I have a new cucumber on its way and it's probably, I don't know, about two days out, maybe one day out if it's really hot tomorrow before harvest. And the plants look pretty good. No major powdery mildew, a little bit of leaf miner. And I think this is that spotted, um, I believe it's a bacterial disease that affects cucumbers, but I'm not entirely sure. On this side, I also had a lot of good production. My center cut squash was able to set new fruit while I was gone without it getting too massive and starting to turn into something I don't want to eat. So I'm very pleased with this removal of flowers. I think the plants actually look very healthy because they weren't focused on food production, they were focused on growth, which allowed them to really fill out this trellis while I was gone. It's actually incredible how much they've grown. And of course the chickens are fine. Chickens are very good on vacations because they have a feeder that automatically adds food, the waterer that can hold water for like two weeks at least. So these guys are totally chilling. Very happy they were back but no major problems. And actually, a little bonus harvest. I just noticed I have my first passion fruit down here. So that's a nice little surprise. And I almost forgot the final update, which is to show you guys that all the beans have come up. I've had really good germination on this side. I don't actually remember if I put beans there. I might've run out of seed by the time I got there. But this section looks great and we should have a great bean crop for the winter. I would say that this whole experiment was a great success. I have a lot of harvesting to do. The only thing I've got so far is that passion fruit I showed you guys earlier. But I'm very pleased with the greenhouse, the irrigation in there. This vacation basically forced me to do something I needed to do a long time ago. And in terms of the seedlings, you guys saw the results. The system worked absolutely beautifully. The shade cloth combined with the soil at the bottom of the trays really ease the lives of these seedlings and they are looking so good for it. So hopefully some of these tips were helpful for you guys, but I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.